So our goal today is to share information about Steiner Tractor Parts program for tractor clubs and also to share some information about effective marketing practices for tractor clubs. We're going to spend about five minutes introducing the program that Steiner Tractor is offering and ways that Steiner is able to help your club succeed. And then we're going to get into the meat of our program. We'll spend about 20 minutes talking about activities that your club could add or improve upon to create renewed community interest and bring together different community organizations to support the club. And we'll also spend several minutes talking about tractor pulls and how clubs can get started or enhance their show with pulling activities. We've been asked a lot of questions about that. Then we'll begin the discussion around effective marketing strategies and ways to improve or enhance your club's advertising. All of the ideas that are presented today are from discussions that I've had with other folks volunteering for their tractor club and from working with my local tractor club. We all can learn from each other. So in terms of the Steiner program for tractor clubs, um, we have a few different things we're offering this year. Most of you that are on the call received a form from us about ordering some materials. And so any club that's distributing our catalogs or our mini catalogs is going to be listed on a calendar on our website with a link to the club's website if it's available. And we'll be promoting this calendar to our customers through our Facebook page, on email, in our website, all the places where we contact our customers. And we would love to be able to share information and photos about your show on our Facebook page and in our blog. So we have a um, we have a, a concept on our on our blog called a tractor story. So you can post your your wrap ups there and on our Facebook page we would love to see flyers about your show before the show happens to help generate some interest amongst our Facebook fans. And then, of course, we have the materials distribution. So Steiner no longer has the resources to attend every show, but we would love the opportunity to share our catalog and mini catalog with your attendees. This gives potential club members and existing club members access to resources for their antique tractor. We're also building out how-to videos on our website to help tractor restoration newbies with their project. Video viewing might be a great club activity if you have club members that are working on some of those projects. Steiner also provides signs to display at your show. You don't need to return them and they draw attention to your catalog area. And we can also provide a number of different promo items including oil funnels, pens, flashlights, hats, bags, t-shirts, and occasionally we have other items that we supply for clubs that might be having raffles or door prizes. Just contact me about your event and I can see how we're able to help. Since we're not attending as many shows as we have in the past, we are looking for opportunities to support your club by advertising in a show guide or other opportunities that you might have for advertising. Just send me an email after the presentation and let me know what types of advertising opportunities your club might have. And that's pretty much the Steiner program as it stands right now. So. Um, you know we're here to help and hopefully this webinar will be one way that we can do that. So we're going to jump in now and start talking about um, some different activities. Tractor shows consist of many activities besides just the display and operation of antique tractors. Tailoring your activities to your local community can drive up attendance and increase community participation and donations. These ideas really all come from folks at tractor shows just like yours and so hopefully some of these ideas will resonate with you and your group. Um, so we'll just start at the top of the list here. Horses. Getting involved with horses at your show does several good things for the tractor club. First, there's a lot of crossover between interest in tractors and interest in horses, so people in both groups tend to get along quite well. And second, you can reach a new audience that is more interested in horses but will come to your show and therefore purchase food, buy from your vendors, and lastly, horses add a ton of fun to the show and can be put to work as people movers. Some shows use trained horsemen and women to park cars or give wagon rides for a donation to raise money for the club. And if your club has blacksmithing demonstrations, horses go quite well with that as well. It also just adds to the nostalgic atmosphere of a farm show. Another idea is chainsaw art. It's a really cool thing if you can find a local chainsaw artist who will come to your show and produce a few pieces. It can attract visitors and make a really nice demonstration. In addition, the artist will have a chance to sell their wares. 
in general with things like an artist that would come to your show, I don't recommend charging the artist like a vendor as it can add so much enjoyment to the show. It's more of an exhibit than a typical vendor. Some clubs have also had really great success adding combine demolition derbies. That requires a certain amount of space and also that you have enough people in your area that want to smash up their combines, but some shows have had really good luck with that. The tractor parade. So on the survey that everyone took when you were getting ready for this webinar, many clubs listed this as their very most popular event. It's awesome because it provides a great opportunity for club members to really show off their tractor to the community and to their visitors. And you can also combine that as a parade to the area where you might have tractor games, such as low rides or dead weight pulls, and have the crowd follow the parade and then watch the tractor games. And then on the next slides, we're going to discuss the next items in greater detail. So machinery demonstrations. Most of us have these at our show. Um, here's some different ideas that if you're not doing these that you might be able to with equipment that your club already has at their disposal. Uh, corn husking, blacksmithing, threshing, um, a sawmill or shingle, shingle mill demonstration. How to use implements. A lot of our visitors really don't understand some of the implements um, that we use with these tractors. And also demonstrations of antique construction equipment like uh, backhoes, shovels, bulldozers. And I really like shows that have a little bit of local interest included like a sorghum press or tobacco harvest equipment. If you highlight machinery that's used in your local area, it can add some appeal for your local visitors. And when you're thinking about adding demonstrations, think about utilizing the equipment that your club and club members already own. Many of your visitors may not have seen one of these machines or they haven't seen it work. And so that can be very interesting and a great way to educate the public about agricultural practices and ag history. Put that machinery club members have to work. Also, safety is key here. You want to make sure that the club is properly insured for any demonstrations and that you take care of both visitor and operator safety. Machinery demonstrations are a bit more difficult if you have small show grounds or if you hold your show in an urban area. In that case, you may want to do educational periods during the show where you show off and explain the machinery to your visitors, but you don't actually make it work. So you'd show the thresher, but you wouldn't actually thresh. And also, having a schedule of these, event, these events posted somewhere on the grounds or in your show guide if you have one will be very useful to your visitors. Another idea is to add a truck show. Adding a truck show is not a lot of of additional work if you have local truck collectors and it will draw in more attendees and additional local interest. A truck show does require a good deal of space and you need to check any local ordinances regarding truck traffic or weight limits. And if you're worried about the space or how many trucks or the type of trucks, you could allow only vintage trucks of a certain year or trucks of a certain size to keep the numbers down. Featuring a specific tractor brand is a great way to draw in some collectors and rare collections from other areas of the state and even the country. Many collectors will travel great distances to brand specific events. It's nice if you're doing this to group the featured tractors together on your showgrounds and feature some boards or information packets about the brand or a specific model if you go that route. If you bring in an outside organization, you may need to provide them with a designated area. Sometimes they need access to a pavilion or a tent to hold a meeting or a gathering for their group. So keep that in mind when you're making your arrangements and your plans. You might also feature a specific type of equipment rather than a brand. For instance, you could feature steam powered or pre-1930 equipment that might be of interest to some groups and draw in collectors from a broader, broader area. When you're doing a featured brand, be sure that you either have a local collector with a big enough collection to create interest or that you have some connection or communication with outside groups to make sure they will arrive with their machinery. And if your show is having a tractor parade, it's really nice to get the featured tractors prominently placed in the parade. Grouping them together also gives you opportunities for some really great photos that you can share with other groups you might want to bring in in the future. And most of our shows have a fun and active kids area. That always draws in families as well as giving the club an opportunity to reach a younger generation and teach them about our agricultural heritage and history. Keeping families coming to your show ensures future success and helps to build your community involvement. 
One idea is to have a tent set up with coloring books and crayons. Steiner can actually supply these if you're interested. Um, some clubs make it a contest, and if you're interested in having the coloring pages or crayons that are provided by Steiner, just contact me using my email address at the end of the presentation. And another idea is to have your club designate a certain tractor or a machine that becomes your club mascot, and you could work him into your coloring pages or into a coloring contest. That can help with your marketing towards families and, and children to be able to put a face or a fun name to a tractor for the kids. Another thought that a lot of shows are doing is to have a scramble for coins or trinkets in the hay. It's really excellent if you can get a local business like a daycare or a child themed store to donate the prizes for this event. There's a couple of local shows to me that have a, a stand set up with some shellers and sorters for corn, beans, and grain, and they let the children operate these. Um, if club members own that type of equipment, it's an awesome way to teach children about the way that things used to be on the farm. Make sure if you do set this up that you have this area manned by volunteers for safety. A lot of clubs are doing pedal pulls. It's really fun to do this for a ribbon or a trophy, um, but you know the smallest kids sometimes they don't want a competition, they, they just want to try it out. And a great way to get trophies for this event is to have local people from your club or from your community donate their old bowling, car, volleyball trophies, and then work with a local trophy place to make a club emblem that you can attach in place of the figure on the original trophy. It's a really low cost, and kids love to get a trophy. If you want to get something like a bounce house, sometimes the National Guard or the Army recruiters in your area can supply those and man that booth in exchange for being able to have their recruiters at the show. And pony rides. Uh, usually the people that operate pony rides do not charge the show. They should be paying you for their space if they're collecting money from the riders. If they're not collecting money from the riders, then normally you would be paying them to come to the show. And the hit and miss engine with the ice cream cooler, these are a big hit with kids of all ages. And the stick horse rodeo, so I never had heard of this, um, but in reading all of your answers to the survey questions, there were several clubs that said they do this and that it's one of their most popular events. It looks like a ton of fun. Face painting, this is something that you could work with a local high school team like a cheer team or the honor society to do this as a fundraiser for their event. And a lot of shows have good success with petting zoos. They can be pricey, um, but if you have a local petting zoo that is in operation, they can usually help the club out. And now we'll jump into some things about tractor pulls. So first we'll talk about some ideas for getting started with tractor pulls, but some of these ideas also apply to those clubs that have been doing pulls for a while and they can be a good reminder for all of us. Tractor pulls can be expensive and they require a lot of volunteer effort. Don't under, underestimate the volunteers that you'll need. The first thing I would stress if you're getting into tractor pulls for the first time is insurance. The club insurance must cover the pulls. If you have an accident and you aren't properly covered, it could be disastrous. Make sure that you're talking with your insurance agent about what you're doing and make sure that the club is covered for all possibilities. And if you're brand new to this, uh, you're going to need to have some safety rules. And the easiest way to get that started is to adapt safety rules from groups that are actively doing pulls. Make sure that you keep your crowd a safe distance from the track and use jersey barriers or other recommended barriers. A lot of it's common sense, um, but I will in a moment, we'll jump over to a website where they have some pretty good rules listed as a starting point. You're going to need volunteers for equipment, um, for the track maintenance equipment, and for the like the flagmen and, and the operation of the tractor pulls themselves. A good way to get that is to try to get a local equipment dealer or a landscaping supply place to donate the track maintenance equipment and then possibly the personnel for track maintenance as well. And if you're brand new to this, one of the easiest ways to get started is to have a local um, pulling group that pulls for points into your event to start. Those groups usually already have their own certified sled, they already have pay schedules and safety rules they're working with. It also will bring in some new folks to your tractor show that may not have been there before and it ensures that you'll always have enough tractors to participate. 
Oftentimes these groups supply their own flagmen and announcers and some track workers, but be sure to discuss that when you're talking about the contract. And if it seems difficult to get started with the poles, just start small. Start with antique poles. They're less dangerous. Um, it's easier to handle the track maintenance. You just have to make sure that you rent a certified sled and have a good operator. And you also could get started with deadweight poles or stone poles. They require a lot less effort but are still a lot of fun for the crowd. Poles can add a lot of excitement and bring in many visitors to your show. You may need to be creative in how you work to pay for the polls, and we'll discuss that next. Some other considerations if you're just getting started is do you want to have night polls? If so, you need to find a sponsor to provide power plants and light towers and fuel for those power plants. That adds a lot to your expense, but it can be a real draw for the crowds in the community. Also consider that it makes a really long day for volunteers that work the show, so you have to make sure you have plenty of relief workers for parking, food, admissions, all of those areas that need to be operational. And then I also just want to note that this picture shows a really safe setup. So this is a 30 foot wide track, it's got concrete barriers on both sides, and then there's about 10 feet between the concrete barrier and the crowd, and they're divided by a fence to keep the crowd from approaching that concrete barrier. This photo is from the Outville, Ohio Buckeye Power Show. I interviewed a man um, there for, my help, for some help in this presentation. His name is Dave Miller. And we'll just jump over now and have a look at a few resources for groups that want to get started with polls. So this is the Outville Power Show. Facebook page and you can come here and like them. They have pictures of their polls and pictures of their show and this is the gentleman who helped me with some of my polling information. Another resource is, I have to open it up here, sorry I thought I had it open. This is the Thumb Tractor Pullers. This is a group that I work with at my local show and you can see an example of their rules. So they have their different classes here and then if you click that it opens up to the rules for this particular class. So they have different rules in each class. Most of this is pretty, pretty standard across different polling organizations but there's always a few, few little differences. I'm just going to jump back over to my slide here. So then for groups that are actively having tractor pulls, I think that we can always continue to look at ways to make and keep your tracks safe for pullers and visitors. On that previous slide, we saw a really safe track. Many of us look at that setup and realize that we could probably do a little bit better on safety. So you always want to stay current on safety trends and rules. And another idea is if you are looking to build up your tractor pulls to get more activity in that area of your show is to get additional groups to come in and pull. So if you're not getting the quantity that you want or need for your show, consider reaching out to some of these other pulling groups and get them to come and hook at your show. It's a good way to increase the number of tractors and get more exposure for your own club. And sometimes you have to get creative with your class payoff schedules. So most pullers that come to these events, they're, they're there hoping to get enough to pay for their fuel costs. So if you don't have a lot of purse money to throw around, one idea is to see if a local gas station might donate some gas cards and you could have a drawing of hook numbers and award $25 or $50 fuel cards. It's a good way to sort of spread the wealth around without having to, to have a lot more purses or a lot more class payouts. And then we're going to talk about sponsorship money. This is something that everybody has asked about. Um, basically, I would say that you have to, you should first make a list of what the benefits are for potential sponsors. So when you go into a local business and you're going to ask them to make a donation, they're going to wonder what they're going to get out of it. So have a list. And your list could include any of these, any, any of these items and other things that your, own, that your club might think of as well. But I'd say if you're a 501 3C organization, make sure that the business knows they can get a tax deduction for their donation. If your club is charging admission to the show, you could offer a certain number of free tickets. You could offer to display their banner on your fence line or your safe barrier. 
If you have an announcing booth, you want to make sure that you're announcing the names of your sponsors during the show. And you could offer to distribute promotional materials at the gate, like their catalogs or brochures. You could also offer, offer your sponsors free vending space. If your club produces a show guide, a calendar, or other advertising, consider dedicating one page to thanking your sponsors and listing their names and phone numbers or their business card ad if the size permits. If you don't produce a guide like that, consider taking out a large ad in the local newspaper and using the space to thank the show or pulling sponsors either before or after the event. And this quote goes a long ways, but make sure that the club members show preference to the sponsors. So if your club meets in a restaurant, go to the restaurant that sponsors. Um, when you go into these businesses during the year, be sure to tell the people working there that you appreciate their sponsorship and that you frequent their business because they are a sponsor. That really goes a lot further than you might realize. As I was pre preparing for this webinar, more people ask me about the vending area than anything else, I think. So I've had a number of calls over the last two weeks, and it seems that everyone is struggling with ways to increase the number of vendors at their show and how to help these vendors to get more profitable so they'll come back. The first thing I would stress is that if there's another area event taking place at the exact same time that's primarily a craft show or a flea market type of event, it's going to be very difficult to get vendors to abandon that event and come to yours instead. If that's the case for your show, you might want to consider either moving your show dates or just focus on other activities and don't worry as much about the vending area. If you want to have some kind of selling, you could focus on having a tractor part swap meet or some sort of a fun auction. My local club has struggled with building a vendor area as well. We have attendance of about a thousand people over two days, not including the pullers and the volunteers and the vendors. We have quite a few activities and a lot of community support, but the vending area just hasn't been as hopping as what we want it to be, and vendors often express disappointment in their sales, and they might come for a year and not come back. So previously we were charging $25 for a spot, which we thought was pretty decent, but after speaking with vendors about their sales and profits last year, we've decided not to charge a set fee, but to ask vendors that make money to make a donation to the club. We're hoping that that will help to boost their profits and then get them to come back the following year so that we can build up more vendors. So one thing that happens with us is that we get six, but we lost five. So we're never really getting ahead. I know a gentleman who belongs to an organization that has a really great vending area. They have over a hundred vendors at their event. Um, last year at, at my club we had like a half dozen. My friend said that it really takes a lot of time and hard work to get that vendor area built up. Um, so one of the things that we're doing is having club members go to local swap meets and, and other like craft type of events, pass out a flyer for a show and a business calling card that we made for the club asking those vendors if they would be interested in coming to our event. We're hoping that with no charge, that if the vendors have the weekend free, that they would just come over and give it a try. The other thing is once you get the vendors at your show, it's important to get club members to support the vendors initially. If club members see something they're interested in, they shouldn't be shy about making a purchase. And if you can get some crafter type of vendors to come, you want to make sure to put that on any flyers or posters or advertising for your show. That makes it more likely that you could get wives or other family members to come along with um, with the men to watch the tractor pulls to go check out your craft show. So if your crowd's primarily men, you either need to bring in vendors that will appeal to them or bring in vendors that will get the ladies to come along with their husbands. <laughs> when I'm at shows, I try to round up all my friends that are there and make a point of going around to all of the booths. Sometimes if there aren't a lot of people in the vending area, Others just won't go through. So just getting a group of people together and making a point of making the rounds will increase the foot traffic at the booths because other guests might feel less intimidated. And the other thing is to make sure that your layout is such that the vendors are getting a lot of foot traffic. So you could design the layout of your show so that visitors have to walk through the vendor area to get to the polls or to get to the food. If you put the vendors way out on the outskirts, many visitors might just skip that area altogether. So the layout can really help your vendors. And building up a vendor area to show with small attendance can certainly be tough. I know so many clubs are struggling with that. Um, 
One idea is to have a card as visitors leave the show to fill out and ask them about the types of vendors they would like to see at the show. Then the following year, the club could seek out those types of vendors and tell them, last year, you know, X percent of our visitors requested a vendor selling your product. Will you come to our show to fill this need? It would give you more leverage to help get vendors interested. And also at the end of the presentation, I have some resources um, for some crafter websites. There are many calendars of events on crafter sites, and you could post your event with a note of crafters wanted and see if you get any bites. And since so many clubs have asked me about this this week, I'm going to be reaching out to some of the national crafter websites and talk to them about ways that clubs could do better to draw in crafters. I'm going to be emailing out any additional information on this that I find to everyone that attended today. And I'm also going to see if I can get any of these national crafter websites to subscribe to our event calendar to allow all of our tractor show events to be presented on their site. So hopefully we'll have more information on that to come. And of course as you grow the community involvement and you increase the attendance at your show, that will increase the traffic in the vendor area and draw in more vendors. So after we talked about all of these activities, it's easy to think if you build it, will they come? It was easy in the field of dreams, but it isn't so easy once you've built a great tractor show filled with fun events for the whole family. You still have to do an effective job of getting the word out about your event and your activities to get the community to come and support the club and the show. Having an effective marketing or advertising strategy is just as important as parking, logistics, vendors, and all of the other elements of the show. So here's a few ideas, and we're going to talk about each of these in more detail. Um, the first is to increase your community involvement, not just in terms of donations and sponsorship, but also in the overall participation and promotion of your event. And print advertising, we're really all doing some of this at least, but this can be more than just flyers. We're going to talk about some free advertising outlets. There's so much free advertising out in the world today that clubs aren't taking advantage of. And with our budget concerns, we should really try to take advantage of as many free opportunities as we can. And email and letter writing campaigns. This can be a really effective way of gaining participation and also donations. And we're going to talk about Facebook and website marketing. That's a bit tougher because it requires some specialized computer skills, but most clubs have at least one person in the group that would have these skills. And I'll say right now, I really believe that if you can run your own Facebook page, you can run a page for your club. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about sponsorships and donations. I had a lot of questions come in about this. I know that times are tough out there and people are having trouble getting sponsors and donors. So a lot of our marketing uh, revolves around getting donations. So we're going to touch on that specifically. And I would say um, remember to keep a consistent message across all of your channels. So if you promote the show in a similar way in many outlets, it gets really powerful. So if you have flyers in a local business, an ad in the local paper, a free listing on your web event calendars, and you're sending copies of the show flyer by email to media outlets, posting the flyer on your Facebook page and website, that message becomes more powerful and more difficult for people to ignore when they're seeing it in multiple places. And never forget to say thank you, both to your sponsors and donors and also to the people in your community that are helping, to your volunteers. It's so important because we couldn't do this without all of the people that make it possible. So we're going to talk a little bit about community involvement now. and. I'd like to look at what one show in Missouri did as a real-life example of involving your entire community. So I'm just going to switch over and show a website and Facebook page for a local group in Missouri. This is the AntiqueTractorShow.com and they had an event in September called Tractors on the Square. Michael Hinton is um, sort of the man behind this group. He's on the call with us today if anybody has questions for him at the end. So he's got um, a really cool website where he's posting things about his event and activities throughout the year. And then also a Facebook page, which is similar. On the Facebook page, in um, during the year, he's got a lot of tractor photos that are being posted, things like that. As his event draws near, he'll do more postings about the event itself. So we're just going to take a look at what, what Michael did in his community. So 
first he worked with the local chamber of commerce and his regional tourism boards to move the event from outside of the town of West Plains right into that downtown square area that we saw. He was able to get all of the local businesses involved. Each business painted their windows and it really made the square very festive. And he also did something I think is really neat and I've never, I, I never even had heard of it before. He worked with the local post office to develop a pictorial postmark for the day. And this was actually a much simpler process than you would assume. At the end of this webinar, there's going to be a link to the form to fill out and take to your own post office if you're interested in this. This is an underutilized service of the post office and it can really help with your community awareness. Um, Michael also used having the pictorial postmark granted as sort of like a press release to send out to the media. So what it is is it's a stamp that they would stamp on all of the mail that day um, with an image or something about your event. Very cool. So Michael Hinton from the Antique Tractor Show, he has an extensive email list of state, regional, and local media outlets. And he keeps them informed about, about his event and about any additions or changes or like when he gets the postmark, whenever these things are happening, he's sending out emails to his list. And he told me that the key is to not give up. In some cases, it took him years to get the attention of media outlets, but his persistence paid off. And this year, he had a spot on the local PBS station showcasing his work for the AntiqueTractorShow.com. And also, by involving the Tourism Board and the Chamber of Commerce, he was able to highlight the local businesses and then get more media attention for the event. He's also done something truly unique in Missouri. He has worked with the governor's office for three years running to have an Antique Tractor Preservation Day declared. It was a great opportunity for the media to post about the event since the proclamation came from the governor's office. And by keeping the state and local government offices on his email list, they're always staying up to date on the activities. And since he got all of these official entities involved, he was able to learn about other resources that he had access to. So he actually was able to get a grant from the city to offset some of the expenses for his show. And all these things happening, the proclamation from the governor's office, the pictorial postmark, getting the businesses involved, that all created a lot of buzz for the media to report about. And articles that are written about these um, about these things basically become free local advertising. You don't pay for the articles that are written. I think a lot of these ideas can work in your community on whatever scale you might choose. Um, many shows have found it really effective to work with local and regional tourism boards. If you involve them in the planning of your show, it really can help with your media relations and advertising in general. They have access to resources that people in your club might not. And those folks have a desire to showcase good things that are happening in the area to bring in people from outside, and they can help you. So getting your community involved in the show is the first and most important step to successful advertising. It's important not to neglect this step. And then we'll talk about print advertising. So this is way more traditional, <laughs> um, but it becomes a lot easier if you have the backing of your community and you know the local tourism board and chamber of commerce. Pretty much all clubs are printing and distributing flyers, and many people that are on the call today listed that as their most effective form of advertising. So there are a few ways that you can make it more effective. Um, First, all of the club members, every club member, should have the flyers in their possession and be remembering to drop them off or post them at any local business that they're entering. And if you go to meet with your local chamber of commerce or a government office or the tourism board about your event, make sure you have the flyers with you. You can give them access to the flyers in print or in a digital PDF so they can post it on their websites or their Facebook pages. And if, if you go to a Chamber of Commerce meeting, you're going to have almost all of your local businesses right there in one room. So if every Chamber member leaves with your flyer to post it in their storefront, you can save from the club having to run to each business individually. Another form of advertising that my local club has found to be extremely effective is placemat advertising in local restaurants. Usually there's some local business who prints and distributes those placemats that you see at the local diner in a small town restaurant. Those are normally a really low cost and extremely effective advertising that will be seen and read by lots of people. While you're sitting there waiting for your food, there's not much else for you to do than read that paper in front of you. Um, newspaper advertising can be costly. I would recommend that you seek out your smaller publications that are 
uh, the trader type of publication. Those have lots of appeal to rural audiences and usually have a lower cost. And many regional or state tourism boards have a magazine that they're offering advertising in. They might offer free advertising for an event that draws people to the community, and so it's a good idea to develop a relationship with them so that you can talk about opportunities that might come up like that. A lot of farm publications can be really costly, but there are some that do offer free advertising to tractor clubs. In the resource slides at the end of the presentation, I have a list of some that do offer free advertising. And the Farm Collector Show Directory, this is essential. It actually is free advertising and print advertising, so I think we'll talk about it on both slides here. But it's really important that you get your show in this. This is sort of the Bible of tractor shows, so make sure you have a club member whose job it is to get you printed in there every year. And then we'll talk more about other free advertising. So there's a ton of online tractor events calendars. I list some on the resource slides at the end. Um, the, you, you, it could go on and on forever. There's so many of them. Another thing is to think about your local area. So you have radio station, TV stations, and newspaper websites. All of them will have online event calendars. It's normally free to list your event on there, and the news people do draw from those calendars in order to see what's happening in the area for sending out media personalities. Also, you can post your flyers or information about your event on community pages on Facebook. So your local town might have a community page on Facebook or your Chamber of Commerce. Um, of course, you can post it on the Steiner Tractor Parts community page as well. And there's usually at least one lo like TV or radio station that's interested in mentioning community events, um, and they'll do that at no charge. So you just kind of have to seek those things out, um, find out who it is in your area that's interested in supporting that, and get them the information about your event. It takes time to go and post your event in all these pages, but it is a great free way to get the word out. Also, while you are on the media websites, like your newspaper, TV, um, and radio, you can reach out to them about any free advertising they might offer. Tell them about your show and your activity and how you're bringing value to the community. Um, and they might do a free article or mention about your event. And TV and ra radio advertising, these can be really costly. If your club can afford to spend money in these channels, and we do have a few people that registered today that are, um, make sure that you're using the budget effectively. You want to think about your target demographic and make sure that you speak with your representative from these stations about the best, most efficient ways to reach them. For most of us, though, this advertising is out of our budget. Um, if we were going to pay for it. So we need to take advantage of free or low-cost options. So you want to find that TV or radio station that wants to highlight your community activities. In my area, there's a local TV station that does something called the Morning Mugshot, where every morning on the early news they feature a community event. You send in a coffee mug with advertising or some other advertising that your club has, and they hold it up on the air and they talk about your event for about two minutes. It's free and it's a great way to spread the word about the event. If they let you select a date, you want to make it close enough to the show to be effective, but not so close that people already have other plans. My recommendation would be approximately three to four days prior to the start of the event. And also don't forget um, cable access channels that list community events. And sometimes you might have a show or a feature on your PBS station that, that highlights your local community, and you might be able to get involved with that as well. And if you're going to consider radio advertising, uh, make sure that you are reaching your target audience. The Farm Report can be a great source of advertising, and if you can get a local seed company or crop insurance type of business, they might be able to help you offset some of those costs if you share the advertising time with them. And there are some radio programs out there that let um, you know that let listeners call in and and either like rant about something or cheer about something. So it's nice to call in and cheer about your event. And then we'll talk a little bit about email and letter writing. This is something that not very many clubs are doing. Um, and I will admit that my local club, and I do a lot of their advertising, uh, we're not doing it. And we probably should be. <laughs> so the thing to 
to think about to start is that you want to try to get your government offices, your local businesses, your Chamber of Commerce, Tourism Board onto your email list, as well as individuals that are interested in your show and your club. You might also want to try to get other clubs, either at the national or local level, onto your email list. And you might find it easier to get them to bring their tractor collections to your show if they have advance notice about the events and the dates and they see that you're really promoting it. And you can also use email to keep that excitement going all year to send out little announcements about things, you know, planning processes that are taking place, things that are getting added. Also, you can use email to highlight and feature your sponsors to the other people on the email list. You want to use email or letter writing to keep individuals and groups informed about new activities that you might be adding to the show and involvement that you're getting from other community and organizations. So email might be out of the comfort zone for many, but it's really not as hard as you might think. Um, the most difficult part is gathering your opted in contact email addresses. So you want to make sure that you're getting people opted in. We don't want to be spammers. Um, you want to start with your club members and then sort of branch out from there. Uh, email is quicker and less expensive than letter writing, but most of these ideas here also could be done with letter writing. It's just that postage costs are a bit more expensive. Um, there are free and low cost email services like Constant Contact, MailChimp, and Vertical Response. I'll have links to all three of them at the end of the presentation. And I'll mention here again that one of the ways that Michael Hinton from the Antique Tractor Show was able to get that proclamation from the governor's office for Antique Tractor Preservation Day was from an effective use of email and letter writing. That's also how he was able to get the spot on the local PBS channel. And it really was from persistence. So he kept emailing for, you know, several years, three years in the case of the PBS station. And finally, they contacted him and said that since he'd been in constant contact with them and they knew he wasn't going anywhere, so they just felt the time was right to do a spot about him. So sometimes you just have to be persistent. Success might not happen overnight with email, but it is really cost-effective method of communicating the message of your tractor club's goals as well as your needs. So you might want to separate your email lists so that you have a list of members that you might send meeting notices to or reminders about club activities. Then you might have a list that is your organization and media list where you're sending flyers and press releases. And you could also have a list that contains local businesses and potential sponsors that you might use for donation gathering. Email can help your club meet many of the goals in terms of community and member participation for low or no cost, depending on your list size. And this is something that not a lot of clubs are doing. Um, at the end of the presentation, you can see those links for these services. Um, and if there is enough interest in this, we could really have a whole nother seminar uh, online specifically about this topic. So Suzette, my colleague that's on the line with me, and I, we handle a lot of the email for Steiner Tractor Parts, and we would be glad to share more information on this topic than what we could really do today. And then we're going to talk about Facebook and website. Does your club struggle to maintain a website? Most people that I talked to this week and last week do. Not all clubs have any members with knowledge about website design and maintenance. WordPress is a really great tool for building and maintaining a website for a tractor club or tractor show. There are two types of WordPress accounts. You can have a free account or a hosted account. The free account is perfect for most clubs. The only drawback is that the page will have a URL or the address that would be like this, mytractorclub.wordpress.com. A hosted account gives you more flexibility with plugins. These are add-ons that make the site do what you want, but they're not necessary in most cases. And a hosted account, hosted account also allows you to purchase your own domain name and use that for your address. So your, your website address would be mytractorclub.com. The drawback to a hosted account is that you have to pay a registration fee for the domain name, and you also have to pay a fee for the hosting account. The advantage is that your club has that domain name and no one else can capitalize on it, and you have a little bit greater flexibility with the plugins for the site. We use WordPress at Steiner Tractor Parts for our blog. It's at antiquetractorblog.com, and I use WordPress to manage the website for my local tractor club. It costs less than $100 a year for the Tractor Club site, including the hosting and the domain name. 
And really, if you can create a Word document with Microsoft Word, you can manage a WordPress site. And just to show you how easy it is so that you don't feel overwhelmed, I'm going to post something on my local Tractor Club site while we're here. So this is the website for my local Tractor Club, the thegarrowoldtractordays.com. And there's a login here. I just have it open in another tab. So you just um, log into the site. And this is your dashboard, so you can see any comments that people have left for you. There's some stats, so you can see statistics on the website. You can add new pages and pictures and posts, but it's really easy to do a new post. So I always do a, a photo of the month, actually. So I'm just going to write a quick post here. Sometimes the typing part is the hardest part. And then I'm just going to add a photo. So I want to upload a photo. And I'm just going to select this from my I'm um, just going to select this from my computer. So it's uploading right now. I should have chosen a smaller one, huh? So there's my photo. You can fill in a title and a caption and some different things like that, but we'll skip that for today. So I'm just going to insert it into my post. I'm going to tag this. So tagging just gives you a way to categorize your posts. And I'm going to publish it. You can get fancier with these posts if you use the, um, the tools here, or there's some other like third-party tools. So then I'm just going to refresh this page. And here's my post. So I've updated the website, and we have a picture of these guys here. And uh, it's as easy as that. So it's not that intimidating once you see how it works. Honestly, the most difficult part about the WordPress site is getting it set up. So you may require some assistance in getting it set up. Um, Either, you know, if somebody in the club has access to a friend or a family member that does this, that's a great way to get started. But if the website seems out of your league, a Facebook page is another great alternative. Or if you do have a website, it can also be a great supplement. So Facebook is um, the leading way to share uh, photos and things like that amongst people in the world. So it's a great way for your club to share information about show activities or club activities and then also share, you know, post-show photos. And you're also going to find a lot of ways to highlight your sponsors through Facebook. So Steiner sponsors a tractor pulling team, the Dirty Ankle Boys, and they've used Facebook to effectively share their sponsors' messages with all their fans. It's really fun and easy, and if you can manage your own Facebook account, you can manage a Facebook page. Um, both the Dirty Ankle Boys and the EntryTractorShow.com have done a great job of tying their websites and Facebook pages together. So having a Facebook page, instead of just doing your show under a, like a Facebook personal account allows you to share with other pages in the name of your show rather than your personal name. So that helps you to grow awareness of your show name and also keep directing people to your show page rather than a personal page. And you can have multiple administrators of a club page, so it isn't only controlled by one member of the club. It would be a good idea to have all of the officers have access to administer the page. So we're going to do a quick demo of um, creating a Facebook page as well, because actually creating the page is probably the hardest part about it. They don't make it very easy. Um, and I'll also show a couple. So I'm logged in right now as myself. Here's Elizabeth Gross. This is the uh, Dirty Ankle Boys page on Facebook. So they have some um, tons of pictures here from the National Farm Machinery Show tractor pulls. Very cool. And then this is their website. So everything ties together. You can actually log in on their website with Facebook. And Here's the Facebook page for the Antique Tractor Show again. So if you want to create your own Facebook page, this is the Steiner page. Um, you can come onto the Steiner Tractor Parts Facebook page as a starting place. You'll see this little 
Um, so you're logged in as you. You go to any community page, um, and you see this little gear thing here. So you click the arrow, and then you click on create a page. And then you choose what kind of a page it's going to be. So I would say that most of our Tractor Club pages are probably going to be organization pages. Or you could possibly do a community page. This is sort of a personal thing. Facebook doesn't make this very intuitive. So I'm going to choose an organization page. So I'm going to say community organization, and I'm going to call it My Tractor Club. And I have to agree to their terms, and then I get started. And then at this point, they want you to upload a picture for your profile. I don't have one here, so I'm just going to skip that for now. And then you're going to write something about your tractor club. This is my test tractor club page. And you can put in your club website if you have one. And then they want to know if this is a real organization. I don't know what that question is about. Um, so then they're going to let you choose a unique Facebook web address. So now um, my Facebook web address is going to be facebook.com slash mytractorclub. So we can set that as my address. And at this point in time, I have a, a Facebook page for my Tractor Club. You can start posting on there, sharing it with your friends, um, checking it out. So it's pretty easy. And then I also want to show how you can post as your page. So once you've created a page, you'll have this little gear here. And I'm just going to post as Steiner Tractor Parts. So now, if you see I'm logged in as Steiner Tractor Parts, I'm going to head over here to the Antique Tractor Shows page, and I'm going to say and I'm just going to share this with his page. So you can see now I've posted this in the name of Steiner Tractor Parts rather than Elizabeth Gross. So this way anybody who sees this post on Michael's page and is interested in what I might have to say is going to be directed to my Steiner page, to my, my community page, rather than to my personal Facebook. So that's really easy. I don't want anybody to feel intimidated by Facebook. Um, it's, much, it's much easier than what you would think, and if you are managing your own Facebook account, you can totally manage a Facebook page. So um, we'll talk a little bit now about sponsorships and donations again. Um, as somebody who gets called about sponsoring a lot of events, I would urge you to make it easy for donors and sponsors. Um, I find it a lot easier when the club or the group that contacts me has a program in place. So they'll tell me, you know, pay X number of dollars and these are the benefits that you get. And some of, the, some of the groups create different tiers with different benefits that allow small, medium, and large donors to participate at different levels, and that's kind of nice too. When a group just asks me for a donation, it puts a lot of pressure um, on the potential donor because you have to try to come up with a number that isn't too low or too high. So it's kind of nice when you know what the expectations are. Um, when you go in to talk to somebody about or call them about being a sponsor, make sure that you know the benefits of the sponsorship. It helps to make a list of what you're going to do, like the list we saw on the, the slide when we were talking about tractor pull sponsors. You know, are you going to display signs, offer free admission, free vending space, include the logo on t-shirts, hats, posters, flyers, um, include an ad and a show guide, you know, promote on your Facebook page. So it, it just helps to have that list. And if you are a 5013C organization, make sure that you're providing a receipt stating that for tax purposes. And think outside the box. It doesn't have to be farm businesses. Call on the businesses that club members are frequent, frequenting every day. Tell the business that you're reaching out to them because you like their product. Um, consider in-kind donations. So if you need porta johns for your show, ask the company if they might donate all or some of them in exchange for being included in your advertising, in your show guide, or you know other advertisements that you might do. And if your event has an admission fee, offer donors free tickets. Um, 
Promote your donors and sponsors throughout the year, not just during the event. So you can keep that momentum going, you know, with things like your Facebook page, a website, and a club newsletter or email newsletter. Um, also, you could consider inviting sponsors to club meetings um, if they want to share information or specials with your club members. That can be particularly useful if you have, a, you know, a company like a um, like a crop insurance or seed company that might be interested in marketing to your club members. They might like the opportunity to come into your group and spread the word about their product or service. And you, a lot of the clubs I talk to are have, have some sort of club publication, so either a show guide or a calendar, and these can be either sold or given away. Um, it, it, they, you know, if they're sold, then that's a good way to raise some money for the club. Um, and if you are printing these kind of things, you know, consider trying to find some way to work advertising into that because that then becomes a way for you to also pay for your printing costs. Um, the key, when I think, when you're going in to talk to somebody about a sponsorship is to make the pitch to your potential sponsors about them and about how this is going to help their business. So you want to be sure to let them know how much the community appreciates your event and if you have, you know, increasing attendance over the course of a few years, make sure that you're mentioning that. And if you're distributing advertising and print form, you know, tell them how many you're printing, what your distributions are like. That lets the business see just how many people they can reach through your event. Um, you want to make sure that if you are telling people distribution numbers, you want to make sure that you've developed a critical mass of people. So if you're just getting started in, you know, printing a show guide or something, you might not want to talk about how many you're distributing in the first year, but perhaps by the third year, that then can become something um, that becomes a selling point about how many people you're reaching, either by email or by um, by a show guide or a calendar or something like that. So that wraps up uh, my presentation for today. I have three slides actually at the end here which have all the resources and examples. And I'll also be happy to email this slideshow to everyone who's attended today as well as the three resource slides here at the end. And we can send that in a PDF format so that everyone will be able to open it. I also have plenty of time this morning for any questions. I know that Suzette's been um, fielding some as we go through here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take everybody off of mute, which could be kind of intense um, and if we might have some echoing or something. So if that's the case, then I'll have to have you raise your hand and we'll unmute one at a time. Um, but I'm happy to stay on the line and talk with um, anybody who has questions. Thanks everyone for attending today and I hope that you were able to get some value out of um, the webinar here. I think I got everybody off of mute now. Um, do we have a few questions out there? It looks like maybe Larry Langshaw had a question. No questions this time. We're just okay. Nope. I see there were a few questions about whether or not we were going to have the audio and the recording available and I think that Suzette was recording this today so we should have that available. Um, if we can get it figured out this afternoon, we'll have it this afternoon. If not, it'll be Monday. Oh, and I'll flip, flip forward here to the resource slides as well. So if anybody wants to have a look at these. I have three of them so I can't get them all on one screen at a time. Robert, did you have a question? Robert Myers? These are just websites for different. So these are all the websites that we visited today. Um, 
this website here has all the information about the pictorial postmarks that we talked about. I can flip over to the next one here too. These are the three services I mentioned for free or low cost email marketing. And then we have some free um, free online data listings and chat listings. Susan and Robert, I just muted you guys because we were getting a little bit of feedback, but if you have questions, you can feel free to post them in the chat or um, raise your hand and I'll take you off a of mute for a minute. We're just getting a little feedback from your phones. And then these are some more um, online calendars and forums. The Farmers Advance, they have event listings on their website and in their paper. And I'm fairly certain that some of these are free, but I didn't see anything on their website explaining exactly how to do it. So I included their phone number because I think if you call them, there actually are some free services. And then these are some of the directories of art and craft shows that I'm going to be contacting. And you may want to contact them to get your event listed here as well. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to take them. If not, you know, um, that pretty much wraps up our presentation for today. So we can, uh, you know, you can feel free to disconnect if you have gotten what you needed. Um, and if anybody wants to stay on the line to go over any questions or see anything in further detail, just uh, speak up and Suzette and I will be glad to help you.